just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. Samuel Hoffman, to the audience, has a very large, very loyal following. But every once in a while, I do see those people come through and comment on your videos and stuff that, you know, say something like, oh, this guy's got it all wrong, or this guy does this. Uh, he, you know, they're not people saying that Nibiru is a lie. They're people saying that they know what's right about Nibiru and that, that you don't. Is there a lot of this... Um, Confusion, are there a lot of camps when it comes to this? Yeah, there's there's so much disinformation that's been published. Oh, God, even way back in, in 2011, 2012, it was just unbelievable. And I, I did radio programs with other people, and they downed me. And, and you know, and I'm sitting here in the afternoons, you know, in my yard watching the planet, watching, you know, Nibiru and Amel Saru and Nana uh, – uh, concentrically orbit each other, you know, out right out my window, and these people are telling me I'm crazy. But you know, that's the thing that they can't touch is we've been Montana Sky Watcher has been running since 2010 officially, but of course I was documenting from 2009 on and doing Google research and everything else, which we and that's back when you could actually get into the satellites and do this. And we were watching the webcams in Antarctica. And while they were trying to distract everybody with the Elenin thing, saying, oh, look here, look here with Elenin, um, from the underneath of the planet at the direct same time was the first sightings of Nibiru from uh, Neumeyer Station, Antarctica. Now, if you look at Antarctica right now, there's hardly any snow there. And they're, of course, talking about the heat wave that's going on on both poles right now, and which it is. It, you know, we're, we're seeing a, a huge heat up of the planet. So... Um, the other the other people aren't taking into account the fact that we, we've been doing this every day for 12 years. So we have we have compiled information that no one else can touch unless NASA, you know, of course, got secret groups of people doing more with more tech than we have, and we're blocked at every you know every avenue. But we, you know, this is why worldwide sightings from people, citizen science, pays off because we culminate this information. And when you get sighting A and sighting B and sighting D, E, and F and it's from around the world, then you know that it's not overhead clouds that you're seeing. It is a phenomenon that is occurring much higher or much more distantly above us, which is how we've proven this over the time. And we have, of course, been very strict about our science policies and made sure that the only topics that we generally discuss are time-proven information and topics that we have actually proven. And we started out without even naming the planets, but only when the, the the fourth or fifth planet got here and it matched all of our other information did we add the tags because we've been careful on our science and there are other people out there that don't do that and that boils down to them talking about one or two pictures or a capture or an occurrence or this or that and they don't mix it all together and, and form a summation now i give credit to you know uh Suspicious Observer and Mr. BBB333 they do a great job but they don't come to summations and then there's hundreds of other Nibiru groups, and then they're all running that, you know, we're still talking about a red planet with wings. No, the red planet with wings is Isatum and her yellow moon, and she has approximately three moons, which is why she does ionized trail, blah, 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 which we have proven through thousands and thousands of pictures and close-ups and through throughout the, what, six or seven cycles of, of the passing of planets now. So we have proven this information where other people have not hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's where it would have led. I guess I was just more asking if there was a fair amount of infighting between these different groups. Or oh, if oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then, sure then they, you know, and then there's different terminology. We, we, have, we have terminology issues where, you know, you can hear when they when they call this that, oh, you know, uh, celestial core, and that comes from, you know, the, the 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 money boys group and all this and I, I'm not going to mention them per, per se they don't need any more uh, fame fine. and fortune <laughs> um, but there's multiple groups out there that they run on their own terminology and most of it has a tendency to be very distractive and not scientific and and uh, superstitious laden and fear indoctrinated and everything else and before you know it they're talking about underground military bases and orphans being rescued, which is all Q information. We see, yeah, there's a lot of crazy crap out there, and you just, you have to, 
you literally have to have hip waders on every day to wade through it and ignore the smell. Yeah. Um, so what about these names? Like, um, now nah, I got a better question. A lot of fans of, uh -huh. of paranormal stuff, I'm thinking about Kara here, are late night, and I start to wonder when the last time they saw daylight was. So my question is, is there anything that people can look for at night to help them see or understand uh, this? There, there, yeah, look, again, we go back to looking at the dark areas. Um, the, people talk about, are there stars? You know, because I can see the stars. In a lot of cases lately, I haven't even been able to. Lately, I can the last couple of days. Um, there are periods, now these planets move. Now, there are periods of time where they are over the top of us, and they'll literally black out entire areas of the sky, and you'll see a very weird illuminated base cloud, or you'll see a slight illumination of what's going on. Um, now, presently, Seru, uh, a planet we haven't seen in uh, almost four or five years, is starting to come back. Now, she snuck in around the other side of the sun and went behind Nibiru and is now on the right-hand side and coming in soon as they continue to rise and pass, because she's actually the holder of, there is Seru and then Yuri and Atu and, and, and Isatum trail on one side and, and Matim, and they're all on one part. And then Nibiru and Isatum are on another side where the, the full count isn't completely known yet how it's laid out in orbit. But um, we're starting to see the illuminated base core of Seru, and it is very much bigger than Nepesity. Nepesity has a thinner three-band um, base cloud with a, with the snorkel that sucks up our atmosphere because it's a smaller planet and it does its thing. But Seru is five times the size, of, uh, the, uh, supposedly, according to rumor, uh, five times the size of Earth, and it's putting off this illumination. So you'll see this weird north sky illumination just after sunset and that will be the illuminated bottom of Seru because just after sunset Nibiru is literally working over the top of us over the top of earth now in the north by northwest sky all the way literally filling the sky to the east and Isatum and Isatum's yellow moon are in front of that so it goes from the northwest to the due north and directly above us at sunset currently which will change oh by the way we also have to mention, you know, today's date is, you know, March 24th, 2022, because of a lot of this information that we talk about in some of our past shows, people take as, as current, and, and it's not current. Each of these shows has different information because the placement changes literally every month. And I needed to say that. I should have said that at the beginning of the show, the date. But, um, I'll because try to it, record it, it, it into all, the it, intro. Maybe I'll record it. Yeah, the okay, intro. yeah. Or you could even, you know, read and just say today's show is, you know, whatever. But anyway, right, yeah. I apologize. I don't need to tell you how to do your job. You do a great job. Whatever, um, Sam. And whatever. So all of this, <laughs> get this information. No, you do a good job. I'm all this information you. changes. <clears throat> uh, get the old dry throat from talking too much. Back to the cough drop. Um, uh, as I almost choke on it. Um, it's 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 transitional and and in the near future we're they're gonna I believe they're rising higher and higher above us and in some cases they might be getting farther and farther away, so we're gonna have the opportunity to see them go away and that's when they're a lot easier to see when they were smaller, and a huge portion of our information comes from the fact that we watch them come in year after year day after day month after month, yeah and 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 we got a, a look at how they behaved and the color that they were. And I remember back in like 2013, 2014, when we started seeing a Satum and, and, uh, uh, and Nepesity, and they were so much smaller than Yuri and everything. And you sat there and we thought, well, what are those? And then they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then boom, there was Nepesity and it was perfect pictures that were coming in of the actual green planet. And, and, and all the information fit like puzzle pieces. And it was just like, wow. And ever since then, we've known that we're correct. And, and part of why our information works as well as it does is because we do know when we have a level of confidence in what we're doing compared to the other people out there who are just guessing and they're always trying to come up with this and that. And, oh, maybe that's, you know, angels or the dragon or, you know, and angels we go back to the wormwood thing. 
Yeah, well, you know, the wormwood is also considered the dragon. It depends on the culture. Oh, you can go okay. to quasi Koto in, in the in the Mayan, you know, because these are all occurrences that each of these cultures have seen over and over because this is not one cycle. This happens every 3,654 years, and it has happened for over 300,000 years. So, you know, we're talking 83 cycles already, and this just happens over and over and over. And, you know, we, we have the big giant crop circles. We have, you know, cave paintings that all match all of this stuff. And if, if you take the two suns and the binary system into account, all of a sudden you can read this stuff because they're all drawing two stars on everything and and you know the the little guys with the four arms and four legs you know and and you start to understand their te- the, it's the shaman that are teaching you information that normal people wouldn't understand and that's how it's all laid out you, you, you can even go to the court we talked about the corbin bible before if you take into account the binary system all of a sudden the corbin bible makes sense because they're describing to you the passing of the of the passing planets and nibiru in 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 other languages means the pl- the planet of passing. So, so and <clears throat> and they're here. I know we've covered this before, but uh, so basically, Sitchin's interpretation of the twelfth planet was basically mistaken, and he got to those numbers because we were going outside of our own planet. Because in his right, interpretation, and, and... he's kind of saying that they include the sun and the moon and the Right, and he didn't have the full. He didn't have the count because he didn't cross-reference the, the subatomic chemistry. It's chemistry. Everything works. And the the another thing that people in modern science don't take into account the interaction electrically between the binary system. You've got these bodies, and we talked about four foot office tube lighting in the past. The, the illuminated gases between a office. You have two poles of electricity, and then inside the tubes, there's all these gases. And when you accelerate the electrons in between these two poles electrically, you have an illumination because the the accelerated particles are bouncing off each other and they put off office lighting. That's how an electric four-foot tube office light works. And that's what's going on in the skies above us with with the object cluster group and everything as well between the planets and the discharging and the placement. So we run off an electrical universe, not a gravitational. And if they don't take that into account, their 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 equations are not going to work out. And and this is of course why we ended up with a twelve planet, because they were taking into account other bodies and they, it just didn't make sense to them. And then, of course, there's also the limited ability to track our, our our past history at that point in time through science. And we were, you know, even today we're still running on 1890, 1880 physics, and it's so drastically much grown since then and yet we're running off that basis of understanding is is the human norm that that people haven't really grown their science at all and this is of course what i hope to change because einstein and newton and i was yelled at for this in 1980 einstein and newton were wrong and 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 they were because there's more to it than that because they didn't have a second solar system to take into account and this electrical exchange between the gases and the other planets and everything can literally be attributed where Earth's water overall came from in the origin, because this was going on back then too. You know, I mean, we are what we are. We're we're a compound. We're not we're not a a destructive scenario. Earth isn't going to be destroyed by you know Nibiru the the destroyer or anything like that. But this is a cycle that happens. This stable cycle that happens time after time after time. Which now, is how our planet has changed, and right. will continue to change. 